What's up guys, how are you all doing? It is Steady Chaos, and so I've been wanting to make a video about the QN90A's mini LED backlight system and what exactly I think about it. The black level performance on this TV for an LED LCD is insane. It's extremely good. So the 65 inch variant has about 700 to 800 dimming zones and the 75 inch model like this is around 1000 dimming zones. So that's pretty good light control. You know, the mini LED, what that means basically is there are smaller light emitting diodes placed behind the screen to illuminate the pixels in front. And when you have these smaller LED lights, you can have more of them as opposed to standard LED lights. And because you can pack more of them in, you have more light control throughout the screen, right? So I thought, let's hope this translates well to the QN90A, and it really does translate well. This TV looks absolutely stunning with 4K HDR Blu-rays, and it looks stunning with any kind of home theater application. You're streaming on Netflix, Amazon Prime, 4K Blu-rays, you're watching content, sports, it's, it's really, really good from a home theater perspective. But now what I thought we would do for this QN90A backlight test and to show you just how good the QN90A is with its black levels, I figured we'd go on YouTube, we'd look at some of these 4K HDR demos, and we'd also do a couple of uh, backlight and back bleeding tests to see how the QN90A handles light bleed. So without further ado, let's get it. All right guys, I have YouTube up on the QN90A, so let's do a local dimming test. So before we jump into this test, let's take a look at my settings. Go down to expert settings, go down to local dimming, and I use standard, okay? You can use low, standard, and high. Low is the least aggressive algorithm for local dimming. You might open yourself up to a little bit of extra light bleed on the screen when using low, but you'll also preserve your screen brightness and specular highlights. Standard is the default level. I feel like this is the best level in compromise between low and high because what happens is when you use high, you'll have less light bleed and haloing, yes, overall. But the problem is, is the, the local dimming algorithm almost becomes too aggressive and it, it dims light output. Global light output is dimmed and specular highlight detail in HDR is also muted a little bit when using high. And a good way to kind of demonstrate this is if you do a star field test, and you run local dimming on high, you're gonna see less of those stars as opposed to running local dimming on standard or low. So <clears throat> keeping it on standard is the best way in my opinion to go because you're mitigating most of that blooming, but at the same time, you're preserving your screen brightness and specular highlights and detail. So we are on standard. So let's go back to this video. We have a local dimming test. Now you can see here this white square there's not much light bleed around this white square. In fact, there's almost none. Now keep in mind that the camera might make any perceived light bleed look worse. I'm at 400 ISO, but really for the most part, there is minimal haloing, minimal blooming. You might say that there's some inverse blooming on this white square and white circle. So <clears throat> as it starts moving left, you see this white circle, the leading edge of the circle is often darker than the trailing edge of the circle. And that is the TV's aggressive local dimming at play. That's the TV attempting to mitigate or minimize any blooming ahead of the bright object by aggressively dimming its leading edge. So that inverse blooming or that inverse local dimming can sometimes be a little bit noticeable or distracting, but really the only time you're gonna really see it or it's really going to stand out is when you're doing a non real world test like this. Uh, oftentimes real world content is going to have more going on on the screen than something like this so you won't even notice it. So overall for an LED LCD the backlight functionality is very good as you can see here with minimal blooming. It, again it's still there. <laughs> it's still there for sure but right there is when I notice it in the lower left See if we can't pause it right there. So this area down here seems to be a little bit of a hot spot for my TV when it comes to a little bit of additional light bleed. I've noticed that. So watch as the pattern goes here. So when it gets to the lower left section of my TV, I feel like that's where there's a little bit of light bleed and a little bit of light trail. 
You see it a little bit there. See it just under the circle. But I mean, we're really we're really nitpicking here. We're really parsing hairs. Overall, this is a very very good performance for a backlit LED LCD TV. So now what we can do is take a look at some 4K HDR demos. Let's take a look at the 4K HDR Fireworks Sony OLED TV demo. This is a really good torture test for LED backlighting systems. You have that inky black sky background and then you have fireworks exploding and spreading throughout the screen. Let's see how the local dimming handles this. Very good, very good. Look at that. There is almost no light bleed to speak of. I'm not noticing anything. The fireworks are colorful and bright and the background behind them remains inky black. You don't have any haloing or any ghosting or any bleed coming from the corners of the screen or directly behind the screen. It is very well controlled. It looks amazing. And what makes it look even better when you're watching 4K HDR content and real world content like movies and other YouTube applications or you know Amazon Prime, Netflix is you have this improved local dimming setup and algorithm with more dimming zones right now that uh, Samsung uses the mini LED backlighting system. And you combine that with 2,500 nits of peak brightness and that's when you get insane HDR impact. It looks really good. So here you're noticing a little bit of light bleed along the bottom right corner of the screen. You see that? You can see it around the lights a little bit. But again, it's not that bad. It really isn't that bad. And I'm sure the camera will make it look much worse than it really is. Overall, I'm pretty darn impressed. Let's take a look at another 4K HDR demo real quick. And as I've said repeatedly, real world content looks almost flawless. When you have a lot going on the screen at once, that local dimming is really good. And any light bleed or haloing is, or you know, non-uniformity with the, with the black screen is really hard to pick out. I mean, look at this. I mean, keep in mind too, I have the camera set up. Oh, I'd say about, just three and a half to four feet from the screen with a 400 ISO. Very good. Now, is it OLED level? No. Like I said, you know, and as we saw with that Sony demo with the fireworks, there are some areas like the lights along the bottom right hand corner of the screen there during the fireworks demo that we could see a little bit of light bleed and a little bit of haloing around them. I mean, this is an LED LCD. No matter how you cut it, no matter how many dimming zones you put behind the TV, you still require LED lights to illuminate the pixels. There still is light back there that you're gonna have to try to control and as of yet, no mini LED or FALD FALD application is 100% perfect at mitigating all forms of light bleed. And it probably will never be perfect until you get to something like micro LED. And in the meantime, until micro LED arrives, what you get is OLED TV. But the problem with OLED TV is it tops out between 750 and maybe 1100 nits with the A90J. So it's just not enough impact for some people, especially in a daytime viewing environment um, to really make them happy. So for those people, the best bet is to get something like the QN90A with almost 1000 dimming zones on the 75 inch model and 2500 nits of peak brightness. You really afford yourself um, some jaw dropping visuals, you really do. So anyway, that's gonna do it for me, guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. As usual, I will get back to each and every one of you when I can, but I will, you know I will, I always do. And until next time, guys, we will see you later. Peace.